Hey! Looking good, everyone. You're looking fantastic. This is Coach Powell of Coach Powell Training Development, and welcome to Coffee, Tea, You and Me with Coach Powell. For those of you who know me, you know for the last 20 years or so, I've been getting together with entrepreneurs every Friday at 3 o'clock. And it's around about the 3 o'clock hour. We talk about all kinds of amazing strategies and techniques that you could use to take your small business, your business, your first time business, your entrepreneur venture, your executive processes to the highest level possible so that you can achieve the success that you can dream about. Right. To me, it's all about thriving. It's not just about being successful. It's about creating that kind of indomitable success that endures, that creates legacies, that creates dynasties even. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help everyone that we possibly can grow themselves emotionally, professionally, mentally into the space where they can be giants in their industry, leaders uh, in their own, on, on and off the field of whatever field of endeavor that they can choose to embark on. And today's no different. Today is actually super great for a lot of reasons. Um, first reason is, my wife and I are celebrating our 20th anniversary around about this time. So we're having a great time enjoying each other, enjoying the space, enjoying the things that we've created, um, which our major creation is my daughter, Kayla. And Miss Kayla just got her first opportunity to uh, have an opening show on Broadway and be a part of the, the team that brought the show administratively into being with uh, Melissa Estridge. And she's doing a great job and we're, we're loving and appreciating the opportunity that she's getting. It's such a great time for me. Personally, that's what's going on in the personal life. But what's going on actually in the business world is a couple of different things. We're going to launch a brand new series today. And in this series, we're going to talk about everything that you need to have, everything you need to do to identify, to create, to develop, to maintain, and to actually execute a, phen a phenomenally good plan on your personal team of advisors. I like to call them your heroes, your, your hero council, the people that you're going to be able to depend on, go to, look up to, lean on, and really, really find the support, um, the confidence, the competence, everything you need to execute whatever you have to execute on a high level. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to get into some details, but we're going to keep it details on a high level if that makes sense um, to, to everyone. And we're going to talk about an overview of what we're going to be talking about for the next few weeks um, as we get deeper and deeper into the issues, the ideas, the concepts of creating your own council of heroes. How do you do it? Where do you go? Where do you look? All the information that's out that, that you can find out there. It's, it's a super great time, by the way, for you to be able to do this because we have all these wonderful AI tools we could use. You have the wonderful search engine tools we could use. We have so many people that we are connected to in various and different ways that we can reach back into to reconnect with and drive. This is going to be a lot easier than a lot of you think. It's going to be a challenge and it's going to be more difficult for some than others, right? But it doesn't have to be impossible for anyone. I'm going on record saying that. Anyone can develop their own hero council. Pay attention to the steps we're going to use. Pay attention to the tools that we're going to talk about and we're going to share with you over the next couple of weeks. Get involved with the discussion. Ask the questions that you need to ask um, so that you can get every bit of this information that you have that you have coming to us. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to have some guest coaches drop by um, and, and weigh in to their experiences with uh, advisory councils and, and, and executive councils and how they put those things together using their own personal um, point of view. And so look forward to that. Look forward to um, some great training manuals and some great tools that we're going to put in your hands over the next couple of weeks. You can look forward to that. But more importantly, look forward to examining for yourself what a good advisory team might do, could do, and should do for you. And I'm gonna share with you some ideas. Um, I'm putting together a, a brand new training manual around this whole thing. But 
I want to share with you some ideas about what could happen if you were to embrace this thought process and then go with me on this journey to begin the process of putting together your own personal advisory council. So today's program is going to be quick, down and dirty, but we're going to have an overview of what we're going to talk about over the next couple of weeks. So why? Let's, let's just deal with that big question in the first place. Why should you create an advisory council? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one is the sheer fact that you are a human being. If you're listening to this, if you're watching this, you're probably a human being. And because you're a human being, you have a group of people that you were born into. They call them your family, your close ties, your kin. These people have helped you develop the skills that you need to survive. Your adolescence, your early childhood, all those things could not have happened. You could not have survived without the family bonds, without the kinship, without people around you that nurtured, guided, and directed you. As you grow older, you began to develop and you bumped into another network. These are your colleagues, your associates, people you went to school with, people you work with, people you've grown in uh, careers with, or you've, no matter how many times you bounce around the companies, there's always people there. And those people have had an effect on how you've created your own identity professionally, um, what that looks like and what that feels like, all has to do with the people that you've surrounded yourself with in your, in your childhood development, and in your, in your early professional life. But what does it have to do with your hero council? Acknowledging the fact that we're all people and we all need each other, the people that you've worked with, people that you've been around, people that you've had the chance to experience so far have had a, played a big part in whatever levels of success you've been able to achieve. Whatever you, however you call that success, whether you, some people might call it failure, but no matter what, you know, we are connected to one another. Human beings are connected to one another. We actually need those social connections in order for us to drive value, purpose, understanding, where we fit into the world, how we're going to organize our teams, what we're going to do in terms of the strategy. All of that comes from our social connections through the culture that we belong to. Super, super important idea for you to wrap your mind around because I know Many of you think that everything that you do in your life is up to you. Everything you do, everything you are, everything you are to be or to become is solely your choice. And I'm here to tell you that simply ain't true. None of us are here alone. None of us will be here alone. All of us will be a part of various networks. That's the network we're born into, the networks that we, that we bump into, and then there's finally the networks that we create. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about creating your own network of heroes, champions, people that will and do want to work with you. They want to believe in you. They want to support you. They want to help maintain. They want to help you thrive. This, These are the characteristics that you're looking for in your hero council. The members of your hero council need to be those kinds of people that will be more than just colleagues or associates. They will be tremendously valuable support mechanisms to help you accomplish the things that you could never accomplish on your own or with just a group of colleagues or just a group of friends or family members. I'm talking about a hero council. I'm talking about people who are empowered, people who are intelligent, people who are caring and supportive to the vision that you have for your life, your business, whatever it is, your career, whatever it is you're trying to do. We all should have a hero council. Now, I know those of you who have um, worked with me over the past, you may have heard me talk about the five helping professions, right? The five helping positions or helping aspects of human beings, right? We may, we may have maybe somebody's friend. That's one thing. People need friendship, right? You may be a mentor, you may be an advisor, we may be a consultant, we may be a coach. 
Sometimes it may be a therapist, right? These are all the different aspects of and characteristics of people that we need to have. We need an advisor to help us do the right thing. We need a coach to help us be better at whatever it is that we are doing. We need a consultant to help us choose the right spaces and the right environments and the right types of tools and techniques and strategies that we need to use. We need a therapist to help us from the help us keep the tragedies in our past where they belong, <laughs> basically in our past and not really affecting how we move forward in our future. All of these different professionals we need uh, sometimes they're just they're not professionals, but we don't you find them. And of course, we need the mentors to help us figure out how to do the thing that we're doing, that they've done, that we want to learn how to do. These are all the things that people can typically do to help one another. Mentor, advisor, coach, consultant and therapist. Now, I know a lot of you all <laughs> may find that last one really funny. I know I do sometimes because tr truly sometimes when people come to me as a coach, they come to me and they ask me for help undoing the trauma that happened to them before they met me. And that's not my job. That's a therapist's job. A therapist's job is to help you look back, understand all the mechanics and all the things that happened in the past that make you, you know, fearful or jealous or worried or concerned or angry or upset whatever the things are that keep you from making great decisions that keep you from moving forward keep you from you know um, having a proper assessment or seeing whatever the reality is of your current situation for exactly what it actually is and not just the fantasy that you create in your mind that's not my job my job is to find you where you are and move you forward if you can't move forward then you don't need a coach you need something else you don't need a coach so uh, I always find it interesting when I have those discussions and dialogues with people. But we're talking about your advisory council. And you're not going to embrace the understanding of why you need an advisory council if you don't first understand that you're only as strong as people around you. You're only as wise as the people around you. You're, you can only you only have capacity that the team around you can generate because you can't do it all by yourself and you must you mean you need other people we need other people now if you're going to create innovation or if you're going to find um, opportunities that you cannot find on your own you absolutely need other people and if you need to find those those opportunities you need to create and uh, be creative and innovative then you're going to need other people outside of yourself, people who are smart, people who are talented, people who are strong, people who are motivated, people who are focused, people who have opposite skills that you have maybe, or people who have complementary skills that you have. It really depends on what you need in terms of what you should build and what you should ask for your hero council to be able to do. One of the biggest things that your hero council can do for you is it can help you build social capital. What do I mean by that? The credibility and the relatability that you have is largely connected to the credibility and the relatability of the people that you know, the people that are close to you, the people who are senior leaders for you, people who are sponsors for you, people who are power brokers for you, people who are mavens for you, people who tell you and share with you information and ideas that they wouldn't share with anybody except for you because of the relationship that, you just spent, that you're spending the time nurturing and developing and building with them, the collaborative partnerships that you're developing with them, the strategies and techniques, the win-win opportunities that you are creating and developing with them. So it's super important. And I'm sure you can see, we're gonna get into some, some, some statistics a little later on in the series but I want you to understand that it's super, super, super important that you embrace this idea of developing your own hero council because the, uh, the alternative is tragic. If you think you're gonna go at the success of your job, the success of a business, the success of raising a family, the success of um, just living a long life, 
happy and healthy and well without the benefit of connecting and knowing other people who will be willing to share their talent, their time, their treasure with you. Um, that's some thinking, thinking. And that's not, that doesn't work on the human scale. You have to be uh, another, a non-human entity in order for that to work. Because when humans don't have each other, when they don't have the, the, a sense of belonging, when they don't have a sense of community or a sense of um, acceptance and, and, and a desire that for that, then they die. They get sick first and then they die. That's what it is. I didn't make this up. It's just the, just the reality of our situation. And so it's smarter basically to rock out to the, to the fact that we need each other and figure out ways to embrace that instead of trying to run away from it or separate from that. We all want to belong. We all want to feel relevant. We all want to feel meaningful. We all want to be special. So how do you do it? What is the technique um, that you need to consider? And why should you get an advisor council or a group of heroes, your own personal hero council? Number one is this. It's your own opportunity to develop yourself bigger and better than you could ever do by yourself. That's the number one thing. And your advisor council, your hero council, is going to introduce you to new opportunities, new people, new strategies, new concepts, new ideas that you can't even possibly consider. You wouldn't possibly consider. That's why they're there. They're there to give you those ideas. They're there to help to share that talent with you. They're there to expose you to those opportunities and find those, help you find those people that you can't find on your own. Then, of course, there's the strategic development. If there's some things that you're trying to get to, some goals you're trying to hit, some values you're trying to embrace, some strategy you're trying to understand and deal with and reconcile and then and then execute, right? The valuable insights and perspectives of your hero council, your advisory team, it's critically important to you, not just being successful, but being successful over and over and over and over again. I'm talking about continual success, sustainable success, growth that keeps on growing. This is what you're looking for. You're looking for this because without this, you can't create legacy. You can't create anything that is going to stick and stay beyond you. And so it's important that you use your advisory council, use your hero council for strategic development. So yes, you're going to develop your business, you're going to develop your opportunities, you're going to develop your strategy. Okay. The next thing that is important to recognize from an advisory council perspective is the advisory council gives you outside perspective. There is nothing more important than this particular concept right here, you know, when it comes to building an advisory council. You are limited to your own perspective. I don't care how open minded you are. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care if you're a world, you are still limited to your perspective, your capacity your ability, your understanding. You're limited to what that is. And until other people inject newer ideas, newer, fresher thoughts, especially people that you trust and believe in because they trust and believe in you, you're going to have a hard time opening up that perspective and drawing new ideas into you that actually stick. Yes, you might hear a great thought or a great idea in a podcast. You might read a book and there's a couple of great suggestions that you want to do. Go to a conference and you hear some great ideas and so on and so forth. But when you have people around you that consistently help share information with you in a way that's going to help grow you and strengthen you and make you better than you are, there's no greater input. There's no greater gift that can be given to you. Um, than people coming together, surrounding you with the love, the kindness, and the sharing that a good, high quality hero council is going to do. Now, it's not just going to protect you. It's going to grow you by giving you objective advice, by helping you identify your blind spots, because you have them. 
by helping you negotiate your bias because you have them so that you can then be great at what we call perspective taking, right? Learning how to listen and understand and empathize with people enough to really, really take their perspective on and really then use that as a tra transformative power that you have to share and to develop. So you got your business development going on, you got your strategy development going on, you now be able to perspective take and you really have, you have a good outside perspective. The next thing that's gonna happen when you build a great advisory council for you is your performance is gonna go through the roof. The knowledge that you're able to tap into the objective professionals that you'll be able to have around you, um, the decision making that you'll be able to collect and develop will be on par with the best of the best. Not just because you have the capacity, but now we have tons more capacity. Uh, I love my fraternity. One of the things we focus on a lot when we discuss things is not about the individual um, achievement. It's about the inclusive achievement. It's about the inclusive we, not the, what do they call it? The inclusive we, not the individual me. Yeah, that's what they do. It's very, very important. So you have to understand those concepts, right? Because your performance, your ability, your talent can be nurtured and should be nurtured by the people that you choose to be around, as well as you should be nurturing them. And it's a super, super, super important idea and concept. The last concept, after you've gotten your business development, your strategic development, your outside perspective, your performance is on, is on, is on, is on par, you're going to be able to tap into a level of expertise in a diverse range of ideas and concepts without incurring the cost of hiring a full-time person. Yes, you might want to give your advisory counsel based on performance, you know, some kind of bonus or some kind of um, fee or, or some kind of compensation, you know, based on what your abilities are, what, what you've been able to leverage as a result of their time, talent, and expertise. Absolutely figure that out. Come up with something that's re useful and meaningful for their time and, and for their efforts. You definitely want to do that. But you don't have to hire a full-time person and with benefits and take care of all that stuff, you know, as well. So just think about, you know, the value that a good, solid counsel can bring to you. And I'll ask you the questions. Now, how are you going to develop your business by yourself better than a group of high quality professionals can? I already know the answer is, how are you going to come up with the strategies and techniques that you need to come up with outside of the things that you might naturally come up with to develop your team, to develop your, your business, develop your ideas, your concepts? Again, I know the answer to that question. How are you going to look outside of yourself without having something outside of yourself to look to that's going to matter? not going to have it if you don't have that, that that counsel, right? And of course, the elevation in your performance. How are you going to elevate your performance beyond what you can actually do by yourself? You can't. And you can't tell me you're going to be more of an expert than you already are or do your capacity can is limited to. You can't. And so the only way for you to do this, only for you to have the development you need, the strategy you need, the perspective you need, the performance you need, and the expertise you need is to reach out, to reach up and develop opportunities to collaborate, to communicate, and encourage people, people who are stronger, smarter, faster than even you are. And we're going to teach you how to do that over the next couple of weeks. We're going to teach you how to get into the details, how to identify those people, how to how to attract them, how to um, show up authentically you in that space. All those things we're going to cover over the next couple of weeks. Um, but this is the overview. This is the bright, this is the right early discussion. If you have any discussions, any parts of that discussion that you think you want to 
really grow with and you really want to experience, do me a favor. Put it in the chat. Put the question in the chat. Pose the idea in the chat. Let me know what you're thinking. Maybe we'll we'll fold your ideas into the training. If you have anything to add to the discussion, definitely do. But know that creating your own hero council is a special thing. It's a meaningful thing. It's a useful thing. It's a thing that you should absolutely embrace. Okay, guys, I told you I'm going to call it short today because I got a lot going on. I got to pay attention to you. But it was good to see you all. Great to play. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, of course, you know how to find me. It's Coach Powell, Coach Powell Training Development. You can um, hook me up on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. You know, if you want to uh, participate in some of the conferences we have, I, I advertise that stuff um, pretty regularly on, through using social media tools. So you'll be able to find out our next conference is coming up late October. It's going to be phenomenal. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you can get involved and get a piece of that. Other than that, I had a great time and I hope you did too. I'm out. This is Coach Powell.